okay so this is a lab that explains to us um, what is polarity and uh, you know there are there are three concepts that we'll be looking at basically polarity is the is the crucial concept that we're going to look at but polarity is actually a result of a bunch of different things okay the first thing you need to understand is a dipole moment which is you know see that right here shown by this arrow okay then the second thing you need to uh, understand is the electronegativity of the atom so uh, this is a molecule it's a, it's a diatomic molecule yeah, something like oxygen or or a hydrogen or hydrogen fluoride or something like that yeah a and b can be same or different depending upon uh, uh, the molecule you're talking about okay it can have um, electronegativities yeah um, in this case you can see that atom has a very less electronegativity and you can change that by moving the slider up yeah uh, and you can see that the atom B has uh, kind of like in the middle electronegativity okay um, here you have bond dipole which is actually shown by um, an arrow like this yeah see that there is an arrow and there is a there is a vertical line yeah uh, so this is an arrow that is used to indicate a bond dipole now we haven't studied bond dipole in our session but uh, it's actually very simple concept nothing complicated about it and, and we'll talk about it uh, right now okay then you have partial charges okay you can select that also select the bond character okay that gives you what type of bond is there okay is there a covalent bond okay is there an ionic bond or is there a bond that is in between uh, these two okay so it gives you a type of bond now we have studied that ionic bond is a strong bond okay ionic bond is something like sodium chloride yeah sodium has a positive charge chlorine chloride ion has a negative charge yeah and so it's a very strong bond because it has a electrostatic attraction yeah, and so it's the strongest bond then covalent bond would be something like um, you would get in a hydrogen molecule or chlorine molecule yeah it's a, it's a strong bond as well it's not a weak bond but any bond is actually much more stronger than covalent bond okay um, now what we can do is we can uh, you know there are there is this deep tab called surfaces we can we can select on that yeah we can say um, electrostatic potential or you can select electron density I will go with electrostatic potential okay because this is what we um, we are more interested in um, now what that tells us is basically the electron density okay that's 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 what it is yeah uh, but uh, you know it's, it's it's very similar to electron density but it tells us where the electrons are more saturated in okay so that's the potential where the electrons are more saturated in so now we we from the electronegativity here we have we know that atom b is actually more electronegative than atom a yes you can see that okay now um, because atom b is more electronegative that means that atom B is going to pull the electron towards itself correct that's the definition of electronegative uh, if an atom is more electronegative it's gonna pull the electron towards itself that means it has a tendency to to attract the electrons okay and uh, uh, so that's uh, um, electronegative atom electro less electronegative atom has a tendency to lose electrons okay and and, and it's a it's a difference between these two atoms or the electronegativity difference between these two atoms that is important not the absolute value okay we don't care how much bad these values are we don't care what is the electronegativity of a or what is the electronegativity of b what we care is the difference in these values so uh, what is the difference in these values between A and B?
guys what is the difference in electronegativity between these two atoms Isn't the difference five? If this is this is right here, yeah. And five slots down this element, you have B, and yeah? so the difference should be around five, or it is five actually, not around five. Correct? The difference in electronegativity between these two elements is five. Yes. B is more electronegative, A is less electronegative, so B, B is going to pull the electron towards itself and so what we can say is the bond dipole which is, uh, which is the, the density of the electron or the, or the charge of the molecule is in this direction and you can also see that it has a magnitude, okay, it, is, it, is, uh, it has a size, yeah? it, is, it has a direction and it also has a size, a specific size. Okay, now because B is more electronegative, because B has pulled the electron, so there is this covalent bond, yeah, and and this is a single bond, yeah. There are A and B. There is a there is a single bond between these two elements, and so there are two electrons between uh, between these two atoms that are shared. Okay, let's say it's let's say these are elements are these these electrons are shared. Now because B is more electronegative, that means these electrons are going to be more towards B, yeah. That means there is going to be a relative negative charge on B atom, yeah. This relative negative charge, or we also called as partial negative charge, is shown by this delta negative symbol. Okay. Uh, you can clearly see that this region itself is is a red region, yeah. And so you can see it from here. Electrostatic potential is negative on this side. Okay. Now. Similarly, A has lost the pair of electrons. Basically, you can think in terms of relativity. Say, now B is pulling the electron. That means A is is losing the electron. And as a result, it also uh, so it's not going to lose completely. It's just losing the extent of it. So it's it's it's, it's going to have a partial positive charge, yeah. And so that partial charge positive charge is shown by delta positive sign, yeah. Um, so the electro, so so the dipole moment or the uh, bond dipole is going to be from positive end to the negative end. Yeah, that's the bond dipole. You can see that the bond character is in between um, covalent and ionic. Yeah, it's kind of in between. So it has a half. Uh, uh, you can see it has a half covalent and half ionic character. This bond. Okay, and and I'll explain to you what that actually means. Okay. Um, now what we'll do is we'll we'll change the electronegativity. So we'll slowly increase the electronegativity of A. Okay. And what I want you to see is uh, what happens to the bond character, what happens to the dipole moment, this this arrow, and what happens to this partial negative charges. Okay. And also pay attention to what happens to the uh, electrostatic potential. Okay, what happens to these colors, blue and, and blue and red color on this on this molecule? Okay, there are a few things, four things you need to pay attention to. So I'll slowly increase the electronegativity, and as I do do that, you can see that the bond character is becoming more covalent. Okay, the dipole moment uh, or the bond dipole has decreased. Okay, it's in the same direction but the size is decreased okay you can also see that that this partial negative and partial positive charges are also decreased okay now i'll explain to you the significance of that yeah so let's increase it to uh, uh to to about four degrees 
Yeah, so now the difference between electronegativity of these two elements, what is the difference in electronegativity between A and B? Quickly. Just one. Yeah? So the difference in electronegativity between two elements is one. It's a very small difference. And so so what we can say is atom B is slightly more electronegative than atom A. And as a result, you can see that it does have a little bit of uh, that pull for the for the electrons. Okay, and as a result, you can see that there is this bond dipole arrow is in that direction. It's a very small arrow, but it is pointing towards B. That means um, B has a partial positive, uh, sorry, partial negative charge, and A has a partial positive charge. It is very small, and that is the reason why you don't actually see it here. But there is a very small positive charge there, very small negative charge there. Okay, you can see that this is slightly reddish. Yeah, this electrostatic potential, and this is bluish. That means that electrons are slightly. So the the electrons are right there in the middle. But so instead of let's say you know these electrons, two electrons being shared 50-50. You can say they are more towards B, you can like 60 towards B and 40 towards, uh, or 60% or, or towards B and 40% towards A, or something like that, whatever. Yeah. So they are slightly, uh, instead of them being right in the middle, they are slightly pulled towards B. Okay. Now see what happens if I increase the polarity, uh, electronegativity of A to five. Okay. And so on. that's it. Okay. Now the bond is covalent basically because the electronegativity between these two elements is identical there is uh, no difference in electronegativity yeah you can see that there is absolutely no uh, electrostatic potential itself there is no pull there are no charges there is no dipole okay what you can say is that because the electronegativity of these two elements are identical the electrons are going to be shared equally by these two elements okay the electrons are going to be right in the middle and therefore none of the element will actually have a partial positive or partial negative charge is that clear so the molecule like hydrogen or or, uh, or you know any two element with same electronegative which is basically when you know talk about um, elements with same electronegativity you are talking about the same elements yeah so two hydrogen atoms forming a hydrogen molecule gonna have zero difference in electronegativity and the bond is going to be covalent yeah now remember that the, the electronegativity of hydrogen is very low yeah but the bond is still going to be covalent if you talk about a uh, fluorine fluorine is the most electronegative element in periodic table the bond is still going to be covalent if you talk about oxygen oxygen is the second most electronegative element in the periodic table oxygen molecule the bond is still going to be a covalent bond between two oxygen atoms okay uh, in case of oxygen the situation is slightly difficult because uh, uh, there are double bond in between uh, two oxygen atoms but it's it's what matters is the electronegativity difference not the absolute value of the electronegativity okay that's what de decides now obviously if you have a situation like this now in this case you have B as the most electronegative element this has a partial negative charge this has a partial positive charge you can say that the bond is a polar bond correct there are charges the 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 charges are polarized in this molecule and therefore the bond between a and b is a polar bond and therefore the molecule itself is a polar molecule correct okay now let's um so we did this we 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 equal the electronegativity of a and b now increase the electronegativity of b and see what happens yeah we increase the electronegativity of B now uh, this is let's say this is situation A this is this is situation this is situation 1 okay let's say this is a situation 1 notice the length of the arrow notice the size of the charges 
notice the charge separation on this molecule okay this is this is one situation notice the bond character okay now what we will do is increase the electronegativity of both the elements by 5 okay isn't it the same situation in this case we increase the electronegativity but the difference in the electronegativity is same so the bond character is same okay so this bond is 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 has the same polarity as that of the previous case it has the same dipole it has the same charge separation so on and so forth yeah clear Okay, now what we'll do is we'll decrease the uh, electronegativity of B, and so let's decrease the electronegativity of B. Okay, what did you see? Do we see that the charges are reverse now, the partial charges? Yeah. So now the A is more electronegative than B, obviously. So there is a partial negative charge on A, and there is partial positive charge on B. The second thing you should realize is the arrow has changed its direction it's exactly opposite now but by the same extent yes so the arrow has changed its direction it is pointing towards a so the dipole is in this direction but by the same extent pretty much okay bond character is in between um, uh, in between um, uh, ionic and covalent okay now if we let's say we increase the polarity so now this is the minimum bond electronegativity for element B. Now let's take the electronegativity of A to the maximum. Okay. Now you see that the, the bond dipole has a big arrow now. Yeah. The, the charges, you see that is a huge charge separation now. The A is much more uh, negative, B is much more positive. Yeah, you can see that the color intensity of A, this red color has increased, the blue color has increased. So there is a much more, um, uh, uh, so the electrons are now in this case is uh, are much more towards A. Yeah, pretty much very close to, so you can say in this bond, instead of being electron being in the middle, the electrons are now uh, somewhere very close to A. Yeah. okay and you can see that the bond character is more ionic so this is a bond that is behave that behaves more like ionic because the difference in the electronegativity is much higher okay so this is something you would see something like in, uh, in hydrogen fluoride okay hf hydrogen is less electronegative fluorine is the most electronegative and as a result the bond character would be ionic it, it's still a covalent bond but it's more ionic type of so it behaves like an ionic bond it's a very strong bond then you would uh, you know you talk about hydrogen chloride uh, HCl or HBr the bond is much weaker because the electronegativity of Cl or Br is not as high as as fluorine but because of the high electronegativity of fluorine the HF bond is actually much stronger than um, HCl bond or HBr bond and so on and so on. and that is the reason why HF is actually a weak acid okay uh, HCl HBr they are stronger acid because you know the bond is weak and therefore they, they, they act as a strong acid HF is actually a weak acid okay um, so what matters is the electronegativity difference between the two elements if the difference is huge then the bond is going to be more ionic if the difference is less yeah let's say like a situation like this then the bond is going to be more covalent is this clear okay so next year we'll talk more about uh, these What is that? Uh, Mayank, what are you saying? Okay. Strange. 
Okay, um, so that's your um, uh, uh, two molecule system. Now let's let's say three molecule system. Okay, what we can do is is so now you have three three atoms. Sorry, three atom system. Yeah, so you have three atoms, and what we'll do is we can change the shape of the molecule. Okay, we can. So let's make it straight first. Okay. Um, now here in this case, B is more electronegative than A and C. Okay, we can click on the bond dipole. We can also click on the partial charges. Now you can see that B is more electronegative, and as a result, it's pulling the electrons from both C and A, and therefore it has this partial negative charge. Okay, um, leave this electric field off in all cases because if you do that, uh, it's basically will will uh, so if you if you it's gonna rotate uh, in the negative direction. Yeah, so if if you have situation like this, uh, the the B being negative is going to point toward the positive uh, electrode, and the and the positive uh, positive ends is going to point toward the negative electrode. So for all cases, just leave it uh, leave it off. Okay, we don't need uh, need that right now. All right, so let's click on bond dipole partial charges, and we can see that um, um, B is B being more electronegative actually pulls the electron, and therefore it has a partial negative charge. A has A and C has partial positive charges. Okay, now do you see molecular dipole? This is this is the uh, molecular dipole arrow. It means um, now in the previous case it was only a two system. Uh, two uh, atom system, correct? So, in in whichever way this this bond dipole is pointing, the molecule itself is going to be polar in that di uh, or the dipole of that moment is sorry, the dipole of the molecule is going to be in that direction itself, correct? But this is you know you have added more molecules now, so that means that this should have a different dipole than the arrows in in which this uh, uh, or the direction in which these arrows are pointing, correct? It should be an average of these or sum of these or something like that. Okay, um, so that arrow is actually shown by an yellow arrow like that. This is the average or or the sum of um, bond dipoles. Okay, this is called as molecular dipole. That means the molecule is molecule actually has a specific dipole. Okay, now in this case it is zero because there are these bond dipoles that are actually pointing um, towards each other. Correct. So these bond dipoles are going to cancel each other. Yeah, it's a linear molecule. These bond dipoles are going to cancel each other, and as a result, the molecular dipole is going to be zero. Okay. Now what we'll do is increase the electronegativity of a to about you know three notches so it's one two and three and so now b is still the most electronegative element c is still the least electronegative element yeah and a is kind of in between b and c okay um, so what you see is now the bond dipole for B and C is pointing towards B. The arrow is big. There is a big difference in electronegativity between A and C. Yeah, it's a difference of five. Uh, difference in A and B is smaller than B and C. Correct. So that this difference is is only three. It's actually only two. Correct. The difference. This is three, and this is five. The difference is only two. So the arrow is smaller. The bond dipole in this case the molecular dipole is going to be pointing towards a which is going to be the difference of um, difference of electronegativity of these elements yeah so uh, so that's arrow is is around 3 this yellow arrow and so you can you can imagine so e b is pulling the electron towards itself from a a little bit yeah but it's pulling actually more electrons from c and so the average of that between between these two black arrows is that okay that's the molecular dipole it is pointing in the direction of a you can see that the uh, the so if you if you if you if 
you look at uh, the charges yeah it's still a delta positive charge it is not a delta negative charge yeah it is still a delta positive charge but it is much smaller because the difference in the electronegativity is much weaker so uh, think about it B is still pulling the electron towards itself from A but that pull is not a lot yeah so that's why it has a very small delta positive charge uh, C has a, a you know the delta positive charge is same as in the previous case um, B is still the most electronegative element and therefore it has delta negative charge uh, whereas the molecular dipole is in this direction yeah it's it's pointing in this direction and the magnitude is this so if you increase the electronegativity of if of a and, and match it to b now you'll see that there is no partial positive charge okay in fact there there is a, a, a usually a partial negative charge but um, you know in this uh, experimental situation let's say there is no partial positive or negative charge on that one because the electronegativity difference is nothing between A and B is zero okay so there is no charge in this one but the the electronegativity difference between A, B and C is five okay and so therefore B is negative C is positive yeah and the molecular dipole is going to be the same as the uh, bond dipole between B and C okay that's the molecular dipole in that direction okay is this clear okay you can increase the electronegativity you can increase and so if you if you do that the only the intensity increases yeah or intensity of these negative and positive charges bond dipole and molecular dipole increases if you increase the electronegativity again what matters is the elect is the difference between the electronegativities of these elements and in which direction these arrows are pointing yeah so uh, let's say if, if we take if we if we if we have a situation where a is the least electronegative then b and then c as the most electronegative yeah so the molecular dipole is going to be the sum of these two dipole bond dipoles yeah it seems like a sum of these two dipoles yes so you are basically adding so uh, uh, see the electronegativity difference be, uh, sorry uh, between a and c is much more so therefore c has a partial negative charge a has a partial positive charge and b does not actually have a charge correct don't see a charge on why because b is more electronegative from a it's going to pull the electron towards itself but those electrons are going to be pulled or that whatever the charge B has is going to be pulled towards B and so uh, and that's why you have a molecular dipole in that direction okay now let's reset we have a bond dipoles partial charges okay now what I want you to notice here in this situation is that you have a b and c and this is the shape of the molecule okay let's leave it like this it's not a linear molecule and this is the shape of the molecule okay now in the previous case we saw if we if you change the shape to linear the molecular dipole becomes zero that's because these two forces are canceling each other correct these two bond dipoles are canceling each other and therefore the molecular dipole itself is zero but if you if you don't have the linear shape if you have a shape like this then what is happening is that these forces are not cancelling they are adding to each other okay because B is again B is most electronegative it's pulling the electron from A it's also pulling the electron from C therefore it has partial negative charge okay and um, because it is now uh, it is because these arrows are not um, so you can uh, you can pretty much do a vector sum of these two arrows and you'll get um, molecular dipole in that direction okay now this is a situation with water okay this is what the water is in water B is oxygen yeah A and C are hydrogens obviously 
we saw that you know oxygen is more electronegative and therefore um, it pulls the electron from uh, from hydrogens yeah and therefore there is a net partial negative charge on oxygen correct and that is the reason why the molecule itself is a polar molecule yeah there is a partial negative charge so you can say that you know the, the upper half of the molecule has a partial negative charge the lower half of the molecule has a partial positive charge and therefore the molecule is polar it can make hydrogen bonds and so on and so forth yes is that clear understood okay uh, what is now okay let's go to now real molecules okay this is uh, a tab and now again we click um, bond dipole molecular dipole uh, don't click partial charges because it actually gives you values which is uh, it kind of gets messy um, you can also click on atom electronegativity if you want yeah it gives you uh, the values of uh, electronegativities of the elements from periodic table and you can also if you want surface you can click on uh, surface yeah electrostatic potential here the issue is that the electrostatic potential is is um, is actually uh, quite you know invading it doesn't it doesn't really allow you to see the molecule very clearly yeah but it, it's fine I mean yeah I can I think uh, it's fine okay let me change this okay so that's your uh, let's okay let's select okay now we can select a bunch of different molecules from the drop down table uh, okay let's let's look at hydrogen molecule here you can see that there is no difference in electronegativity between these two elements yeah and therefore electrostatic potential is basically right in the middle zero there is no uh, there is no uh, separation of charges there is no separation uh, pulling or pushing of electrons yeah and therefore the molecule is non-polar and that is the reason why actually hydrogen exists as a gas in a gaseous state because there is no polarity it cannot make bonds with other hydrogen molecules and so therefore it exists as a individual molecule okay uh, as a as a as individual one molecule and therefore it's a gas at room temperature and pressure is that clear okay let's go with nitrogen same situation even though nitrogen is much more electronegative than hydrogen but the difference in the electronegativity is zero between two uh, nitrogen atoms and as a result the molecule is non-polar okay uh, partial charges maybe yeah so you can see that partial charges are zero same thing with fluorine yeah there is partial charges are zero there is no uh, a charge separation molecule is non-polar let's look at HF now HF fluorine is the most electronegative element in periodic table yeah hydrogen is not much electronegative and as a result it pulls the electron you can see there is a huge charge separation there is a, a good amount of partial negative charge on fluorine partial positive charge is on hydrogen yeah and you can see that the molecular polarity molar molecular dipole is in this direction yes bond dipole and uh, so you can see that the, sh the the so you can see the sizes of bond dipole yeah and molecular dipole is identical in this case yeah because it's a diatomic molecule uh, it's one and bond dipole and molecular dipole is, is pretty much the same thing in this situation okay uh, let's look at water molecule now yeah and so you can see that the the electronegativity difference is uh, delta negative on oxygen delta positive on hydrogen um, this is a bond dipole for this OH bond this is a bond dipole for this OH bond and um, this is a molecular dipole 
okay so you can see that that's a molecular dipole um, now if you select the electrostatic potential you see that huge electron density over oxygen so this is uh, a negative part of the molecule this is positive part of the molecule and because the molecule is polar it can actually make hydrogen bond same thing with hydrogen fluoride yeah as I said hydrogen fluoride is is, uh, is polar and therefore does make actually a hydrogen bond it is the only uh, uh, it is the only acid H, um, HX acid you know H, uh, uh, hydrohalic acid which is actually liquid at room temperature okay uh, HCl HBr um, HI all gases basically okay so this is water and water now because of this uh, difference in electronegativity can make actually huge hydrogen bonds strong hydrogen bonds and, and and it can actually make multiple hydrogen bonds oxygen can make multiple hydrogen bonds with uh, other hydrogens it can make four more hydrogen bonds with uh, so one oxygen can make um, uh, f uh, one oxygen can make two hydrogen bonds and and each hydrogen can make uh, one hydrogen bond. there are total four hydrogen bonds per molecule of water okay and that's why uh, water actually has such a high boiling point uh, boiling point of water is 100 degrees yeah so that's um, water you can look at co2 again you can see that the shape of the molecule is linear yeah and even though there is uh, uh, there is a difference in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen but the net dipole molecular dipole of the moment uh, of the molecule is zero yeah, because it's a linear molecule these two dipole forces cancel each other yeah and so you get uh, so you can see that there is a clear charge partial charge uh, on partial positive charge on carbon there is a clear partial um, negative charge on oxygen correct but the net dipole molecular dipole is zero therefore the molecule is nonpolar and therefore this is a gaseous molecule okay does that make uh, you understand why you can see even though there is a charge density on the on the oxygens but the net dipole is zero and therefore um, it cannot form hydrogen bonds it cannot form bonds with other uh, other carbon dioxide molecules and therefore it is a, uh, a, a non-polar molecule okay slightly polar um, but non-polar enough that it exists as a gaseous molecule okay carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature you can say HCN yeah there is a net dipole towards um, uh, towards nitrogen uh, let's look at NH3 ammonia this is something that you will have to encounter uh, next year and year after that yeah so let's close that so nitrogen is again um, quite electronegative okay you have uh, hydrogens there yeah so there is a partial negative charge on nitrogen partial positive charge or charges on hydrogen and you can see that the net dipole of the molecule is pointing in that direction that's the shape of the molecule yeah uh, this is the actual shape of the molecule this is actually called as tetrahedral shape you you will learn about these shapes um, in next year okay uh, and, and uh, why these shapes are there you will learn uh, year after that basically so uh, that there is a uh, very exciting reasons why these molecules actually have this shape. These are not the shapes just because they want to be in that shape. You know, there is a scientific reason for these molecule to have these shapes. Yeah, to assume these shapes. Uh, why water is a bent molecule? The water is water is called a bent molecule. Yeah. So if you look at the structure of the water, so that's a bent molecule. Okay, that's the shape of the molecule. You can you can see it. It uh, you know a bent molecule yeah whereas ammonia is 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 like this it's like a pyramid you can say yeah mm, uh, it, it's like a pyramid it's called tetrahedral and again I don't want to go in much any detail other than that and so it, it is a polar compound um, 
we look at BH3 okay so this is boron this is again a shape of the molecule you can see the shape of the molecule is planar correct it's not like uh, uh, NH3 NH3 and uh, so is you know if you replace boron with nitrogen you get ammonia if you replace nitrogen with boron you get BH3 uh, it's called borane and then mm, you can see that this is actually not a you know uh, not a pyramidal molecule it's actually a planar molecule okay and so as a result of that these dipoles that this molecule have cancels each other and there is no net molecular dipole on this molecule and as a result it's a non-polar molecule okay um, same thing with BF3 boron trifluoride yeah even though uh, we have now replaced the hydrogens with fluorine it does not change the fact that the net dipole on this molecule is zero and so it is non-polar um, this is an formaldehyde you can see there is a carbon carbon double bond yeah this hydrogen so uh, uh, carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen oxygen is more electronegative than carbon as a result the net dipole is in that direction it's a polar molecule okay um, carbon tetra uh, carbon difluoride uh, uh, sorry methylene difluoride yeah ch2 f2 and um, so the net dipole you can see it's it's a vector sum of some of uh, it's kind of like in the middle so fluorine is pulling the electrons correct from carbon carbon is pulling the electrons from hydrogen fluorines are pulling the electrons from carbon you can see the faint arrow there yeah, it's, it's not clearly visible but you can see that it's pointing towards fluorine there is a partial negative charge on the fluorine and you can see that the net dipole is actually pointing uh, is going downward so let's go back here and see if, if we can we can so let's increase the polarity of a and c okay now you can see that a and c are both electronegative there is a partial positive charge on on um, on uh, central atom there is partial negative charges on a and c the net dipole is a vector sum of these two okay is that understood do you guys know what vector sum is uh, i don't know if at this level you 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 supposed to know vector sum and stuff like that i don't know you probably do i think probably deepak sir has taught you about this yes or no okay good i'm glad you know that so that means that you you understand why this arrow is pointing in that direction yeah okay so again same situation if you make it linear it becomes zero if you change the shape it becomes like that yeah it becomes becomes like that yeah it, it becomes a vector sum of uh, these two arrows okay uh, let's look at other some molecules um, we saw methane clearly a non-polar molecule yeah there is absolutely uh, again the net dipole is zero for for this molecule yeah and so methane is a gas um, now here if you change one of the hydrogen in methane with fluorine you get uh, 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 fluoromethane yeah and so you can see uh, that there is a, a net vector a net molecular dipole in that direction therefore it's a slightly polar molecule than methane okay um, here CHF3 um, CHF3 yeah so you can see that again this is a vector sum of these three dipoles yeah in that uh, so it's, it's pointing downward right in the middle mm, if you look at CF4 again uh, this is something like CH4 if you replace all the hydrogens you get uh, a molecule which has you know the net dipole molecular dipole is zero and therefore this is again non-polar molecule okay is that clear yeah shape of the molecule is such and it's it's pulling the electron from all direction uh, it's kind of like in all direction and as a result of that there is no net molecular dipole on this molecule it doesn't matter what the electronegativities of the molecules of the atoms are 
the shape is such that uh, uh, there is no net molecular dipole on this molecule understood guys okay here is a chloroform again uh, chloroform is liquid at room temperature it has a net dipole you look at uh, uh, look at let's look at uh, CH4 or, or let's look at mm, this molecule yeah, this is a non-polar molecule, and I, I believe it's it's uh, uh, carbon tetrafluoride, uh, carbon tetrafluoride. It's it's a it's a liquid. I believe it's a liquid, but it's a it, it has a very low boiling point. And if you take chloroform, chloroform I think has a boiling point of about uh, about 60 degrees or so. Okay, this is CHCl3, and it has a net dipole in that direction. Okay. So, um, is everything clear on this lab? Okay, let's look at other lab. This is called as sugar and salt solution. Okay, what we have here is um, a tap. You can add water. Uh, we don't need to. You can also take out water by by evaporation. Yeah, we don't need to. You can take out the water the way you want, but you don't need to. You can also uh, take out the water using this tap, but yeah, again, we don't need to. You can uh, click here, and it, it will give you concentration of salt and water. Okay, and as we said in the in the previous class, that um, water does not conduct electricity. What you can do is take this uh, uh, the circuit, dip it in water, and see if the light bulbs. It does not. Yeah, the light is not glowing even the water dissociates it cannot conduct electricity then we are talking about pure water here yeah it cannot it does not have any ions uh, the, the number you know the ions are very small in concentration as a result pure water does not conduct electricity yes Okay, now add some salt till you see the concentration up to 0.2, I guess. Okay, and you can see that the bulb is glowing as soon as you add salt. Okay, it's about 0.2, let's say. The bulb is glowing, you can see that. Do you see that? okay now we'll double the concentration of the salt and let's see what happens to the intensity of the light okay does it goes up or down and we know what we should expect but let's see if, if you know and so we double the concentration let's make it around point four or so yeah and you can see that the intensity of the of the bulb goes up yeah it's glowing much more if you add more salt obviously so you can see that the intensity of the bulb is increasing it's glowing much more stronger now yeah the more ionic the solution the faster it will conduct electricity and the intensity of the bulb is going to be stronger okay if you don't have ions in the solution uh, if you just have a pure water it's not going to conduct electricity and as a result um, it's not a conductive solution Okay, you need to have salt uh, or some sort of ions in the solution for it to conduct electricity. Okay, now uh, let's click on sugar. Uh, remove salt from. So there is no. Now we need remove the salt. There is no salt in the solution. Again, you can see that the bulb is not glowing. There is no salt in the solution. Yeah, now we add uh, sugar. Yeah, so we add about uh, zero point two. Uh, add sugar enough that it makes it becomes like 0 0.2 uh, yeah so now the 0 0.2 is the is the concentration of the solution and you can see that the bulb is not glowing yeah sugar is we know is soluble in water but it does not conduct electricity okay so sugar solution is not a conductive solution correct and the reason is because sugar does not dissociate into ions it is soluble but does not mean that it's going to dissociate into ions yeah and that's the reason why the bulb does not glow you can add more sugar to it if you want 
here but does not change the fact that sugar is not going to conduct electricity yes okay now let's move to micro tab yeah so here we'll see exactly what is happening um, you can you can take uh, so this is where you'll see the concentration of the of the uh, solute okay so here we take first solute we take is is uh, sodium chloride okay we add sodium chloride to it and uh, we just add so that's sodium chloride and what you can see is in 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 uh, solution the water the sodium chloride dissociates into so the 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 green ones you can see that the green ones are chloride ions and the and the this uh, pink one are the sodium ions yeah it dissociate into respective ions yeah so this green actually carries a negative charge and the pink carries a positive charge and therefore they can so this solution is now an ionic solution okay and ionic solution can conduct an electricity and therefore you saw the bulb glow up yeah make sense okay now remove this uh, salt and select sucrose which is which, uh, you know it's a sugar it's a big molecule it's a giant molecule yeah, and so uh, let's shake and add some so added like bunch of different molecules of sugar and what you see is that the molecules dissolve yeah the molecules separate from each other okay if you add a, 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 a spoonful of, of sh uh, sucrose you know in a water what happens the sucrose or the sugar dissolves that means that the molecules will separate from each other that's because water is a polar solvent Sh uh, sh sucrose is a polar solute and therefore it will dissolve in water but does not mean that it's gonna break into individual ions you don't see them breaking into individual ions yeah so there are no ions in this solution of sugar and therefore it does not conduct electricity make sense you can add more does not change the fact that this this is still a non-conductive solution okay you can use different uh, different solute you can try uh, sodium chloride and uh, so uh, chlorine is, is sorry calcium chloride yeah chlorine is green calcium is is dark green and you can add so this is the um, uh, solution of calcium and you can see that it immediately breaks it's a ionic molecule calcium chloride it immediately breaks and and so it should also conduct electricity okay you can use a uh, uh, bunch of different molecules you can use sodium nitrite it's again no3 minus it's a molecule itself it's a complex molecule as a nitrogen and three oxygen and uh, sodium ions yeah so that's so you add that and see that it breaks again into uh, ionic solution so the ions can be large or small but it has to be ionic and uh, there are you know there are protein molecules which are basically has um, charges okay so proteins carry charges basically because there are charges on protein molecules made up of amino acids so these protein molecules are large they have very high molecular weight okay in thousands 10,000 15,000 atomic mass unit so these are very giant giant molecules they are charges but they conduct electricity so what is important is not the shape or size or or, or uh, the complexity of the molecule what is important is that does it have a charge okay does the does this uh, molecule dissociate into ions and and that's what we see this molecule uh, which is made up of sodium and NO3 okay NO3 dissociate into separate negative ion sodium into positive ion and now you have uh, a solution okay you can use bunch of different uh, uh, so you can see glucose again it's a it's a complex molecule yeah and uh, you can see that this is a glucose molecule it does not dissociate and so it should not conduct electricity okay um, so that's pretty much done and, and so this is where you see this is this water molecule this is a tub correct 
and just focusing on a small portion of the of the molecules and you see this this is a water in liquid state okay and uh, you can click on partial charges I guess and you you add salt to it and see what happens how the salt dissolves in water you can see that this positive charge ion is now surrounded by negatively charged oxygen correct this is you can see that negative charge oxygen is surrounding this uh, positive sodium ion similarly this negatively charged chloride ion is surrounded by the positively charged hydrogen ions yeah and this is uh, dissolution this is what is and so if you if you think about it um, uh, as I said the sodium chloride actually has a very high melting point yeah it's about 800 degrees Celsius so if you want to break a bond between one NaCl molecule and another NaCl molecule you need to provide huge amount of energy yeah 800 degrees is a very high temperature to break any bond it's ionic bond it's a very strong bond but if as soon as you put it in water the molecules uh, uh, you know these ions come apart they, they break yeah and so you can imagine the power of dissolution you can imagine the amount of energy that is generated by these tiny little water molecules that surround these ions yeah and so this is just uh, you know a, a layer of you know see that this negative ions sorry this uh, this positive ions surrounding the sodium ions yeah so obviously there is going to be a, s uh, a charge separation on these surrounding water molecules they are going to be pulled by the next layer of water molecules they are going to be sur pulled by the next layer of molecules so these charges you know each ion will be uh, you know you will be pulled by millions and millions of wa uh, water molecules and that's what generates energy each wa each time this water molecule binds with another water molecule it generates that energy it liberates that energy that energy is used to separate these ions which otherwise would be very difficult to separate okay um, and this is how the sugar molecule looks like uh, sugar molecule is actually uh, a dimer yeah this is a dimer uh, it's a molecule it's a it's a dimer of glucose and fructose yeah, and so you can see that this is so uh, on the left hand side you see a ring okay uh, I can't leave the uh, because it will spin so, uh, in the left hand side you see a ring and that is your glucose molecule okay this is a six membered cyclic structure it's a glucose molecule and on the right hand side you see a five membered cyclic ring okay this is the fructose molecule okay and they are connected these two these two molecules are connected by a oxygen bridge okay so when uh, when you eat sugar the, the 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 sweetness of the sugar is because of this molecule okay glucose is also sweet but it's not as sweet as sucrose sucrose is actually much more sweeter than than glucose okay uh, but when you eat it it gets absorbed immediately into your body into your body this is going to be broken into glucose and fructose and then you know glucose will uh, be utilized to generate energy fructose will separately be utilized to generate energy okay so that's your glucose molecule okay so this is the end of today's lab uh, do you guys have any question you can add you can add glucose molecule and you can see that it does not actually break you know it separates but it does not break into ions yeah so all these oxygens are going to be uh, all these oxygens and, uh, and hydrogens are going to be so you know dissolved because of the respective negative charges okay cool um, so we will